Okay, so this first video, so this first example is going to be a strong, strong titration. So I want to do a strong, strong. And what I'm going to do is talk about the curve and the calculation and kind of put the two together. Okay. Um, I think the easiest one I'll use is going to be hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, which give sodium chloride and water. Okay. So that's going to be, I'll leave that off here. Let's get out of there. Okay. So that's going to be the overall, the overall reaction, right? I'm going to start at point A and I've got HCl here. That's all I have. And that's why the pH is so low, right? That's the species I have. So I basically have that in my flask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add hydroxide and just continue through this whole thing. The amount of hydroxide is going to go up and up and up. So what we did in our packet, if we remember, if we go back to this problem, this is the problem that we worked. So I'm going to kind of work this problem again, but show you where I am on the curve and all the different chemical species that are present. The strong is easy, and then we'll do the weak after that. Right? So I basically have um, this is in my uh, flat, uh, my bu uh, burette, and here's what I have in my flask. Right? So right here, I have 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar acid. Does that make sense? Okay. So if I want to find out what my initial pH is, because this is a strong, I can say that my pH is going to be the log of the concentration of H plus, right? Which is the negative log of this, the concentration of my acid because this completely dissociates, right? However much of this I have, I have the same amount of that because it goes all the way. So I take the negative log of that and I get a pH of one. So if you look at our curve, that's where we are. We're at one. Make sense? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bunch of uh, uh, sodium hydroxide. Now, this picture does not directly correspond with the amount of sodium hydroxide in the problem, but that's okay. I think it's still going to illustrate a point. Now, what's going to happen is here I only have that. Here, what I'm doing is this reaction. Okay. And I'm going to add increasingly um, larger amounts of hydroxide. So what's going to happen as I do that is this is going to go down, okay, and this is going to go up. And so as this goes down, notice that my pH is going up, isn't it? Because I'm lowering the amount of HCl or hydrogen ion that I have, and I'm just making more sodium chloride. And all through here, I use all of the, this up that I have, because it's b below the equivalence point, which is here. So I'm using this up, and I'm just going this direction, going this direction, going this direction. So what we did in your packet is we said, okay, let's say that I add 49 milliliters to this flask, right? I'm not at the equivalence point. What is my pH? So basically, I'm somewhere down here. Somewhere down here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this is my equation again. I'm going to write this out again. Okay, this is going down and this is going up. So the initial moles, what did I start with? 
I started with 0 0.005 moles because that's how much is in that flask, that many moles. I added 0 0.0049 moles of this. Now, the thing to note is that if I have two moles, let's say I had five moles of this, and I added one mole of that, how many moles of this am I going to have left? Four. And I'm going to have one mole of that. If I add another mole it's going of this, it's going to eat up another mole of that, and I'll only have three moles and it'll go on to here and so on and so on. That's what we're doing here. So in this case, I uh, started off with 0 0.0050 moles and I used this is 0. Point, this is 0 0.050. This is 0 0.0049. So all of this reacts with that and this goes away and I get moles of excess HCl or moles that are still left. All I have left is 0 0.0001 mole of that because this takes that away, takes another away. So does that make sense? So I've had 0 0.005 of this, I'm taking away 0 0.0049 of it. That gives me how many moles I have left. This is the volume of my solution. The volume of my solution is how much I've added. I added 49 moles of this to 50 moles. So that's 0 0.099 liters. So 0 0.0001 divided by 0 0.99 is... 0 0.001 so the pH is negative log of that okay so what I did is I calculated the pH in this region right here while I was adding sodium hydroxide and I should be able to calculate the pH depending on how much of this I add at any point along here and all you do to find the pH is find out how much HCl you started with how much the sodium hydroxide took away and the pH will result from whatever HCl is left and that's it and that will happen all along here until I get here now when I get here what has happened is that I've taken my HCl and my sodium hydroxide and I've gone all the way to this and these are completely gone and that is where I am right here I've put in enough H of sodium hydroxide in there that my HCl is completely gone and all I have at this point is sodium chloride so that's why that pH is 7. Now, what's happening from here to here? So let me go back to this. When we did this problem, I'm going to go back to my key because you all have this in your notes. When we did this, we did the equivalence point. We found out that the pH was 7 and that everything else was a spectator ion. So this is before the equivalence point. This is at the equivalence point and now we're going to look at after uh, before the equivalence point at the equivalence point and now we want to look at after the equivalence point so let's look at our graph and see what's happening after the equivalence point now all I have in this beaker is sodium chloride and water so really all I have is water so now every bit of sodium hydroxide I add is just sodium hydroxide so basically all through here I'm doing this all 
Um, this is not really a balanced chemical equation. This is really a depiction of what's happening. So what's happening is I've got all the sodium chloride floating around. It's doing nothing. And I just keep adding hydroxide and adding hydroxide and adding hydroxide. So the pH from here to here is just going to be represented by how much of this I have. It's going to be um, the negative log of the concentration of this I add and take 14 minus that, and that will be my pH because I'm just adding hydroxide to water. So what we did here is the same thing. We go after it. We find out that everything we're adding now is excess OH because we're past equivalence point. We just take the negative log of that and then 14 minus that and that's going to give us the pH of the solution. Okay? So those are the stages of a strong titration. That's all done by moles. You don't use any Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Everything can be done by moles there.